Hey, it's Ronnie. All the good names are taken. Podcast back for another October review. And today we're talking 1981's Just Before Dawn. Never heard of this movie before somebody suggested that we review it back a couple of months ago. And it's a movie I wish I'd have saw much sooner because it wasn't bad. The movie had me from the very beginning when we get these random, like, I want to call it raw photography shots of wilderness and i think the the movie was filmed in oregon and you can tell beautiful scenery uh really simple story and let's get to it the cast of this movie is not bad chris lemon from thunder in paradise george kennedy from the naked gun movies sex frank uh no not right now ed uh we got work to do. And a guy who I wasn't very familiar with as far as his name was Greg Henry, who is one of the final two in this movie. You'll know him from movies like Slither and Payback, and I'm sure he's in a thousand things that I'm forgetting. Where is the Mr. Pibb? Now, we got four. Actually, make it five because there's a random f that's tagging along with them. Uh, you'll remember him as one of the, the low-life betters from Let It Ride. Traveling up the mountain to check out land that belongs to their father. And along the way, they run into a lot of weird stuff. This movie starts off with Mel from Sleepaway Camp and another random redneck in an old beat-up wilderness church. And Mel's making sure he gets a first-class ticket to hell by mocking a preacher when he looks up and there's a hole in the roof, and there's a fat ass with a brown face looking down. So he goes outside to check what's going on. Meanwhile, what we find out later is his nephew opens the door and probably knows the most brutal kill in the movie gets stabbed right through the ass cheeks. And what I mean by this is the blade comes out between his ass cheeks. So that means he was stabbed directly into the And if you're following along with continuity this month, that means we have back-to-back -back movies where somebody's d either got ripped off or somebody got stabbed through it. Now, this movie takes a Halloween 3-ish type turn where Mel is running through the forest away from this fat ass. And if you get a look at this fat ass, he is easily 400 pounds and about 60 pounds of it is in the front of his pants. We call that a butt in the front down south and there's no way he is going to be running Mel down in the woods and I thought that was the most unbelievable part of this movie until later on when they revealed maybe why this guy is so quick. The campers stop to piss or they spot something or something like that. And Mel runs out and says, you got to help me. But he's holding a damn liquor bottle in his hand so they don't take him seriously. They throw a couple of sandwiches in his face and they leave him behind. Mel sees the fat ass jump out of a tree and land on the back of the RV and just starts laughing because he knows he's okay. Probably the most ridiculous stunt in the movie. Probably the most awesome stunt in the movie. Uh, they actually made it out like he's so heavy, they felt it inside the RV. I left out the fact that George Kennedy tries to warn all these guys from going up the mountain. He says, look, I'm not coming up there, and just at least tell me where you're going to be. That way I know where to tell the authorities to find the dead bodies. Like I said, lots of like wilderness shots, and they quickly walk up on a, another wilderness girl. Wilderness girls. And immediately my mind jumps to, okay, they're, they're remaking deliverance here. There's going to be a family in the woods of inbreds that are going to like terrorize and finally kill and rape these five people. But that's not what it was. We later find out that there is a group, like a, a redneck inbred family that lives up there because they shoot the boombox in one of the most ridiculous dance scenes I've ever seen. And they tell them to get off the mountain before they wake up the devil. A lot of devil talk in this movie. One of the most unrealistic parts of this movie, besides the entire movie, is when they finally park the RV, you can see that the RV gets bogged down. And along the way, they show you the winding turns of the mountain. So the first question I ask is how are they getting this RV out of here? There's nowhere to back up. There's nowhere to turn around. And now it's bogged down. How are you going to get it out of here? It, that aspect was retarded. Uh, there was a cool rope bridge scene that reminded me a little bit of whitewater summer where they all have to walk or Indiana Jones, where they have to walk around, uh, walk over this rope bridge. I knew that would come back in play. And it does later in the movie when they cut the rope on Chris lemon and he falls into the water, but that's not it. He lives, but Chris Lemon, instead of sitting at the bottom of uh, of the canyon on the edge of the water, 
keeps trying to climb up the rope until they throw him off. And when his brother finds his dead body later, it's a supposed uh, dramatic scene. All these characters are kind of crazy. First off, the photographer guy, he was pretty much worthless. I thought for a second there he was going to take Chris Lemon's girl. They're trying to make Chris Lemon jealous. They don't know he's dead yet. And he doesn't have his glasses on. He sees somebody approaching from the distance. He assumes it's Chris Lemon. It's not. It's one of the fat asses who stabs him in the stomach, chases the girl inside the church. And that's when we get the reveal that it's not just one fat ass, it's twin fat asses. Meanwhile, George Kennedy runs into mail at his place. And let's talk about George Kennedy for a second. He's doing some kind of experiments on plants. He's talking to his horse. I don't know what's going on with this guy, but Mel shows up trying to drink all the horse's water and tells him that those kids are doomed crazy Ralph style. So George Kennedy heads off on his horse. He runs into the inbred family who tells him they don't know nothing. And then the girl sneaks out to say, hey, it's twin fat asses doing this. In the meantime, the other chick whose name I don't know, she's the blonde, the conservative one at the very beginning. She does a 180 and starts putting on very revealing clothing and dancing during this dance scene that I said was ridiculous. She becomes like a weirdo to the point where I was like, is she a member of this inbred family? Because this is just weird. The end of the movie sees George Kennedy shoot one of the fat asses after the chick in the tree takes one hell of a bump when he cuts the tree down and they think everything is good. George Kennedy on like a down note goes, send the police for your friends. Greg Henry's like, they're not dead. He turned into a giant pussy at the end of this movie. And as they go back to the camp, the girl puts on makeup for some reason. And he's like, what's going on? And she repeats something that the ginger said. I want to put on makeup and be pretty for the demons. And I'm like, okay, here we go. Here's the reveal. She's fisting to kill him. No, the other fat ass twin comes out of the trees, slices the gut open of Greg Henry, puts the chick in a bear hug to the point where she's bleeding out the mouth, but she gets the heat back wrestling style by taking her hand and shoving it down his throat until he chokes to death. And then the, the guy who is crying hugs her on his knees while she stands tall and is the man. And they roll the credits just before Don, a pretty awesome movie. And mainly from my point, the reason I think it's so awesome is I downloaded the original cut, so I had all the green lines and the pops and the specs in, in, in the footage, and I thought it was awesome. Pretty simple movie. It delivered everything it needed to deliver. Uh, it was a fun experience, and check it out. I'm pretty sure it might be free on YouTube. Maybe not. Can't be that expensive to rent, so go out of your way to get it. Check it out. Hit me in the comments. What did I leave out? What's your favorite George Kennedy scene? I'll see you guys tomorrow. Six, Frank? Uh, no, not right now, Ed. Uh, we got work to do.